In one of the world's driest lands, Saudi Arabia has buried trillions of liters of precious water beneath its endless desert, on purpose. With almost no rainfall, no rivers, and a population that exploded from 7 million to 36 million, the kingdom was racing toward catastrophe as its ancient aquifers, holding water from the last ice age, began to vanish. But this is no ordinary crisis or solution. Why would a nation desperate for water hide it underground? The true story behind Saudi Arabia, buried trillions of liters of wastewater beneath desert outcome is unfathomable, reveals consequences far beyond anything the world expected. The answer begins with a harsh desert, vanishing lifelines, and a gamble that rewrote the future. Rainfall in Saudi Arabia barely reaches 100 to 150 millimeters per year, less than six inches, making it one of the driest places on earth. With no rivers to rely on, the kingdom turned to dams as its first line of defense against thirst. Over the past decades, engineers built 522 dams across the country, designed to capture every drop from rare floods and seasonal rains. Altogether, these structures can store up to 650 billion gallons of water. Impressive, but not nearly enough. The population soared from 7 million in the 1970s to more than 36 million today, stretching every available source to the breaking point. Most years, the dams remain only partially filled, their reservoirs waiting for storms that rarely come. As cities and farms grew, planners realized that surface water alone could never meet demand. The search for a deeper, more reliable lifeline had already begun. Geological surveys estimate that beneath the Saudi desert lie around 26 trillion gallons of ancient water, stored in deep aquifers like the Sac. This fossil water is a relic from a time when the Arabian Peninsula was lush and wet, thousands of years ago. Unlike rainfall or river water, it does not replenish. Once it's pumped out, it's gone for good. Recent satellite measurements show the Sac Aquifer is losing between 1 and 3 billion cubic meters every year, drained by farms and thirsty cities. Some hydrologists warn that at this rate, these reserves could be exhausted as soon as 2030, or at best, by 2045. As one independent expert puts it, Saudi Arabia consumes far more water than it can replenish naturally. The countdown is real. The kingdom must find a new answer before the ancient lifeline finally runs dry. Saudi Arabia now produces more desalinated water than any other country on Earth, over 20% of the global supply. At the heart of this effort stands Ras Al Khair, a sprawling facility on the Gulf Coast that delivers around 792 million gallons of fresh water every single day. The plant's construction demanded $7.2 billion and years of political maneuvering, with engineers and officials pressing the case for national survival. Today, more than 30 major desalination complexes line the coasts, all running around the clock to keep pace with soaring demand. The process itself is a marvel of modern engineering, stripping salt from seawater using advanced membranes and heat. But every gallon of fresh water comes with a price. For every liter produced, up to one and a half liters of concentrated brine, laden with chemicals and heat, gets pumped back into the sea. This salty waste threatens marine life along both the Gulf and Red Sea, a trade-off that plant managers and environmental scientists are still struggling to resolve. Beneath the desert, a hidden network stretches farther than the Nile, 8,700 miles of buried pipelines, some wide enough for a small car to drive through. These artificial rivers transport desalinated water from the coasts deep into the heart of Saudi Arabia, passing through mountains and beneath endless dunes. The main trunk lines measure between 1.2 and 2.5 meters in diameter, with high-pressure pumps stationed every 40 to 80 kilometers to keep the flow moving uphill toward cities like Riyadh and inland farms. Even with advanced engineering, leaks remain a constant threat with losses ranging from 1.5 to 5% each year. Some segments reach as deep as 1,000 meters underground for storage and recovery, using multi-layer barriers to protect against contamination. 
The sheer cost is staggering. A single $7 billion contract drew scrutiny from whistleblowers and sparked debate over procurement practices at the highest levels. Yet without this invisible system, the desert would remain parched and uninhabitable. Saudi Arabia's plan to plant 10 billion trees is nothing short of audacious. Scientists and engineers are using drones to scatter seeds across vast tracts of desert, targeting areas mapped by satellites for the best chance of survival. In some pilot zones, satellite data shows green canopy cover rising above 40%, a dramatic change from bare sand. Urban corridors in Riyadh, planted just a few years ago, now record summer temperatures over a degree cooler than similar streets without trees. Air quality sensors in these green belts measure up to 10% lower dust and nitrogen dioxide. The transformation is visible from space and felt on the ground. In Wadi Dawasir, an elder recalls the day their wells ran dry, forcing families to abandon fields that had fed them for generations. Years later, Pipeline water brought the land back to life, palms grew tall again, and children returned to play under their shade. Saudi Arabia's water crisis is defined by stark numbers. Less than 150 millimeters of rain per year, 522 dams holding 650 billion gallons, and fossil aquifers, once containing 26 trillion gallons, now projected to run dry as early as 2030. In response, the kingdom built over 8,700 miles of underground pipelines and now produces more than 20% of the world's desalinated water at immense financial and environmental cost. This engineered transformation enabled the Saudi Green Initiative, which aims to plant 10 billion trees by 2030 and has already increased canopy cover in pilot regions by over 40%. Yet, key questions remain such as the long-term sustainability of relying on desalination and the true ecological impact of injecting treated water underground. Much of the technical data and government planning remains classified. What is clear from the evidence, Saudi Arabia's strategy has altered both its landscape and its future, proving that even in the world's driest places, monumental change is possible, at a scale and cost few could have imagined.